The 15 cent increase is based on a cost of living adjustment tied to the consumer price index. Economist Manuel Reyes from the Hibbs Institute at the University of Texas at Tyler presented the study to city council at a recent work session. The analysis simulated the economic impact of CPI indexing from 2020 to 2022. Over that span, the report projects gross regional product, or total business output, to decrease by about $4 million. At the same time, wages and salaries are estimated to increase 2 and a half to $3 million. It also concluded the city would lose about 100 jobs. The meeting was well attended by business owners who strongly opposed the 2014 ordinance creating a city minimum wage law. It, it just doesn't make sense. You guys really, really need to look into what it's going to do to the daycare centers in New Mexico because we're barely going to make it in Las Cruces. My payroll has increased over $600,000 a year. My staff and employees are paid much more than the industry. But uh, how long can I sustain this? The answer is not very long at all. Now, the game has been contemplating what we're going to do if we do this and if the city continues to be ahead of the state in the amount of money we have to pay. And you know what's going to happen? Counter service. We're going to go from 280 employees to about 140 employees. At Lorenzo's, I can't do a kiosk and order. Um, I'm looking at El Paso because it's booming and they're 750 an hour. That last voice belongs to Vince Vaccaro, who owns Lorenzo's Italian restaurant. Vaccaro says minimum wage increases phased in since 2015 have negatively impacted his business. They've affected my, my employees, my customers. Benefits have been cut back. Uh, prices have gone up. Uh, hours have changed. A lot of things I would like to have done at my restaurant, we've backed off because we can't afford it. We've also lost some positions. Uh, we've lost two. Uh, in the last year. Vaccaro says his margins have also dropped, and rather than raising prices, he's taking less income. Unlike many other business owners, Karen Richardson makes minimum wage. Richardson owns Karen's Animal House, a pet training, grooming, and daycare facility. Richardson has been in business for six years, but began paying herself last year. She says she takes the minimum to pay her employees first. Being in business, you hire the people that you need to have to keep your business running. I consider my employees family. I pull my kids into my office on a regular basis, have mom to, set, mom to kid talks. Um, so I'm the last one to get paid. I do not believe that I should be the highest paid. Richardson says increasing the minimum wage also raises insurance and workman's compensation. She adds that state and federal wage laws should supersede the city ordinance. State lawmakers passed a law to gradually increase New Mexico's minimum wage to $12 an hour by 2023. That begins in 2020 with an increase to $9 an hour. Federal minimum wage has remained at $7.25 for a decade. The buying power of the federal wage peaked in 1968 at $1.60 an hour. If it had kept up with inflation, the federal minimum would be $12.07 in October 2019 dollars. That's according to a CPI inflation calculator from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Those positions, we need to pay more because we value human life. Right? District 1 City Councilor Cassandra Gondara says small businesses are the city's bread and butter. But she adds it's important that Las Cruces keeps up with inflation so workers can earn a living wage and overcome poverty. I think about our workforce, our workers who are working in those particular um, positions and the money that will be in their pocket and literally um, being the voice for those people as I've suggested I am. I've seen how people are living. This would really help individuals um, lift them up and out of poverty and that's really what I'm looking at. So trying to find um, a balance with that is, is what I'm hope, hoping will come of this. The balance of running a business and making minimum wage is a challenge Richardson knows firsthand. But to keep her doors open, she believes in prioritizing her workers. My business isn't going to stay open if I don't keep employees. I've, I've lived on a thread before, I'll do it again. For KRWG Public Media, I'm Michael Hernandez. Uh, everybody in the country is doing it.